Right, good morning. So can you guys hear me? All right, good. So we're going to continue on doing the uh, integration for trig functions. Do one more example, and we're going to move to section 7.3. Another example, what I said yesterday was a um, very classic one is the following one. So actually this one also, we need to use integration by parts. It's sort of like the reduction formula. Okay. So this one is, we do the uh, antiderivative of secant x cubed. And what we did yesterday was the integration of a secant x. Maybe you can go home. Um, we did this one by a very clever substitution and you can go home to practice. How can you do the similar kind of substitution for cosecant x? And as for secant x squared, that was very easy because we know the antiderivative is just tangent x. So we move to the next level, uh, the integration of uh, secant x cubed. So how am I going to do that by, by using integration by parts? Again, the way to look at, the, at this, we need to split. We write secant x cubed as secant x times secant x squared dx. The way when we look at this one, this will help you to find what your u and the dv is. In this case, I will call this part dv, and that will be u. The reason for me to choose my dv as secant x squared dx is it's very easy for me to find out the antiderivative. I can find out what v is, because if I do the antiderivative of secant x squared, I end up with tangent x. That's the reason why we want to split rewrite secant x cubed in this way. So go back here. Now you will be just equal to secant x. And we know follow the procedure for integration by parts. Yes, we do differential of u. Take the derivative of secant x. Uh, we end up with secant x times tangent x and the dx. Now with these four terms available, so we can use u dv. So we have to have u times v integration by parts. So u is secant x times tangent x, right? Minus, uh, we do integral of v du, v is equal to tangent x. And the du here is a secant x times tangent x dx, right? Now look at this, we have tangent x times tangent x that can be written as tangent x squared. So now you have tangent x squared dx. Now here, you are, we're introducing some new terms, tangent x, but we're doing the integration of secant x. So at this moment, I'm trying to think of one of the trig identities. Uh, can I rewrite that um, by using uh, tangent x squared equal to secant x squared minus one. So that's the next step. So we write tangent x squared as secant x squared minus one. Now once you have done that, we can distribute this. Uh, you take secant x times secant x, that's secant x cubed, n, right? The other one will be secant x times one, so that's just secant x dx. Now break this parenthesis, we end up with secant x times tangent x minus the integration of secant x cubed and my plus minus minus that's plus antiderivative of secant x dx. Okay, this is my right hand side. Now we've been doing that for a couple of lines. What is the left hand side? 
the left hand side is what we want integration of secant x cubed so just want to remind you here the left hand side is secant x cubed dx so we end up with finally with this equation probably you want to say how will that help me well we're going to use another technique we learned from integration by parts this will be what i underlined uh, will be the unknown and you can move this one to the other side and you can solve that equation so if i move this one to the other side to the left hand side i will have like twice of integration of what i want to find out seeking x cubed that's equal to secant x tangent x plus the antiderivative of secant x dx. We just did that, right? Last time. So this one, I can just write down the, the result. What we did is just let your log of secant x plus tangent x. Right. Uh, the final step will be clear. So we just divide both sides by two. The integration of secant x cubed dx that's equal to a half. Uh, you divide everything by two secant x tangent x plus a half of lateral log of absolute value of secant x plus tangent x plus constant c. So this is a very um, classic example, and actually that's uh, we're using the integration um, by part the reduction formula. And if we, I can show you actually, this is um, one of the problems in back in section 7.1. I can copy and paste that part here. Just give me a second. Uh, so, let's copy and paste. This is the problem. Um, number 54, okay, number 54. So actually this one is in section 7.1. So you can see, you can relate the power of a secant x to the nth power to the secant of n minus two, the power is decreased by two. So you can go, you know, this is what we did. You know, we relate the integration of the secant to the cube to the secant x to the first power. You see the difference between these two powers is two. So you can always go down. So if you're interested to get more of that, please check this problem. Okay. Um, any questions? Now with this, I think that can um, wrap up this um, section. Let me close my one of the windows. Uh, section three, uh, seven point three. So we're going to start a new section. So this one is. Uh, Seven point three. So this one called trigonometric substitution. So in this section, what we are trying to learn is just um, the integrals. How to do the integrals involving the following terms, either involving like the square root of x square minus two, x squared minus a squared. And we can treat x as the variable. That's what you want to do integration with. And this is a is just like a constant and, and in real numbers. So it won't change. So either involving the square root of x squared minus a squared. Another case is these two uh, numbers, they switch orders, a squared minus x squared. Or the third case is uh, x squared plus a squared. Pretty much we want to deal with any integral like this one. Okay, so for example, you can, uh, let me just go to, 
if you want to handle the problems, we what we want to do is, uh, um, for example, we want to solve uh, which one will be good example. Let me just look at that. Um, maybe let's do uh, integration from zero to um, two thirds uh, square root of four minus nine x squared dx. This type of function, and you see here, and uh, it involves the second type of things, right? Okay, so because in this case, you can match four minus nine a x squared as a squared minus some x squared. So in this case, you can think about your a actually. I can think, I can think about my a is equal to two. And this one x actually is, you have to replace that by three x. So this one, basically, this is the difference of two squares. So how will we solve this type of things? And the way to do that is we want to use um, trigonometric substitution. So I'm going to give you the general idea how to do the substitution in this three different cases, okay? Uh, you don't have to memorize that. And based on my uh, experience, this is how I learned that. It all based on triangle, um, right triangle trigonometry. So all based on right triangle trigonometry. So you are going to draw the right triangles and the use Pythagorean theorem, okay? So that's what I'm going to show you. And once I have tell you, uh, I have told you all the three the ways to do the substitution for each case. Is then we are going to go over some some examples. Okay. This one is also a very challenging section. Pay attention to that because it involves a lot of steps. Uh, you are going to use trick substitution, and you are going to um, get the right term taken care of. Then you have to convert that. Typically, after substitution you end up with uh, the integration of some trig functions. Then we're going to use what we learned in section 7.2 to solve for that. So typically a problem will get, you know, it's easy to get like two pages of paper to solve for one problem. So, all right, so let's take a, take a look over the first case. This is how I memorize, how I'm going to do this one. If you see some term involving a square root of x squared minus a squared. So this is what I would like to draw, right? So we learned, you know, if you have a right triangle, you have three sides. This is the hypotenuse, right? You have, if you think about this is angle theta. So this one will be um, your opposite, OPS, o, um, no, o, um, OPP. And this side will be the adjacent. Right? That's what we learned. We have an adjacent square plus upside square that's equal to the hypotenuse square. That's a Pythagorean theorem. So we know that. And we know the hypotenuse is the largest side among the three sides. Another way you can write down is the hypotenuse. For example, if you take the hypotenuse square minus the opposite square, you take the square root from them, then you give you get the adjacent. Right? So we all know this. Once I solve this uh, form, square root of x squared minus a squared. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to draw a right triangle. I'm going to draw a right triangle. Then it, uh, I will put in one of the angle as my theta or alpha, whatever you want to call that. So you can just randomly pick an angle. So typically, so people pick this angle and you can name that. So, well, let's say this is my angle there. And here is the right triangle, non, uh, that's 90 degrees. So once I have that, I'm going to assign the length for this three side. In this case, I would say, because you are subtracting a square from x squared, so it looks like the hypotenuse is the largest the side. So I think in this case, I'm going to assign the variable x as the length of my hypotenuse. Does that make sense? Because this has to be the largest the side. So you can subtract in the square of the other one from that. 
And once you have done this, uh, well, in this case, uh, you are A, you assign that as the um, adjacent. So you have two sides X, the adjacent, uh, the adjacent is A, and we can figure out by, by the Pythagorean theorem, the opposite will be just simply the square root of X squared minus A squared. See, that's what we want to have. We have this term. And also I forgot to mention the purpose for doing the trick sub, uh, substitution is we want to get rid of the square root. So the purpose for this or trick substitution is we want to um, get rid of that square root. Nobody wants to take uh, deal with the square root. Thing. Okay. So now let's, uh, uh, let's see how we're going to introduce the trigonometry. So we know this, so we know X over A. Hypotenuse over the adjacent. Do you still remember that? What does that give you? Which uh, trig function does it give you? That will give you the secant, right? Okay, secant. Yeah. So by looking at that, that gives me the hint to do the substitution. You're going to set, multiply both sides by A. So you have X is equal to secant. Okay. So this is the substitution. Okay. So uh, once you have the uh, taking care of this uh, x equal to a secant squared, then typically because we have to deal with this term, we have to express that square root x squared minus a squared um, as some of the trig functions. And now in this case, we would like to use the opposite over the adjacent. And so that means square root of x squared minus a squared over a gives me tangent of a. So that tells me if I multiply both sides by, mm, by a, I have x squared minus a squared, take the square root, that gives me a times tangent of a. And you see, if I, I do the substitution of this because of trigonometry, you see the square root symbol disappears. What you end up with is a trig function, a times tangent of a. That's the whole idea about doing trig substitution. And if you do not go with this, somehow you can always, you know, just by doing some algebra, you still can get that. I think when I was teaching um, pre-calculus, that's one of the exercises. People try to simplify this by using that substitution. So what you can do is you can substitute a thickened theta here for x. So if you do that, so if you square this thing out, it's, it's a squared secant squared theta minus a squared taking the square root. And you see you have this um, a squared as a common factor. So we're going to do this. Now you see here, when you see this term, that reminds you of using one of the trig identities that just tangent square theta, uh, take the square root of that. And when we're doing all this, we may assume A is positive, where A is long negative, your theta is the right triangle is between zero and the two, so everything is positive. So that's why you still end up with A times the tangent of theta. So there's another way to think about why the square root of X squared minus A squared gives you A tangent of theta. So now we have these two terms. Another one I want to uh, tell you when, in the future when we're doing the integrations, a lot of times you need to take care of that dx term, right? Differential term, a lot of times you're going to do this. You see, go back here, you have like a dx term you need to take care of. So how am I going to do the differential of that once I have this um, substitution? So here you see your x is equal to a secant theta. So all you need to do is you take the derivative of a secant theta and associate that with d theta. And we know the derivative of secant theta is just a secant theta tangent theta d theta. So that's another equation you probably need to use in the future. Once you have these three ingredients, or three boxes, so you can go back to just solve this problem turn the original integral into an integral of like trig functions of theta, 
then use what we learned in 7.2 to solve for that. So this is what I'm trying to say. How will we deal with this square root of x squared minus a squared? What's the treatment? How will we do that? We have to draw the triangle like this and get these three boxes ready, then do the substitution. So this is one case. Now I'm going to do the second case. Okay. You don't have to memorize all these things. As to, I'm, what I'm going to show you, once you have practiced a few problems, you will get the sense how will you proceed, okay? So to, in, uh, based on my experience, this uh, triangle is really important. I often draw this triangle, draw the triangle, assign theta, assign the three sides, then the, the rest of that just make him from this right triangle. So let's go to the second case. The second case, sometimes you have to deal with another term. Now this term, uh, your a and x switch position. So it becomes square root of a x a squared minus a squared. Now in this case, how am I going to draw the right triangle? Well, you still have this same shape of right triangle, put the theta here. Now, when you assign the side, the length for the three sides, things will change. This time, your a squared is like the first place. That tells me that constant a should be the length of hypotenuse because that's going to be the largest number. You're going to subtract anything from there. So in this case, I'm going to put my a right there okay and also my x you can assign that as either the adjacent or the uh, the opposite it doesn't matter but our book chose to use put x as the adjacent now once you have x as the adjacent by the Pythagorean theorem this opposite has to be equal to according to the Pythagorean theorem that's how you get this square root of a squared minus x squared turns out. Okay. Now, once you have this right triangle, what will be the substitution? You have to use a right triangle trigonometry. So I'm going to do this. This case is different. So x over a. I have to use this one. This one is just the adjacent over the, the hypotenuse. This gives me cosine theta. And if I multiply both sides by a, I get the substitution. x is equal to a times the cosine theta. In, in the past, my student asked me, why do you want to use that? Can you use other um, trig functions? Well, you can try that. For example, people will ask, can I use cosecant theta? Yes, you can use that. But well, how will that help you? So if you write down cosecant theta, according to the definition, cosecant will be the hypotenuse over the opposite. So that gives you the hypotenuse is a, and the bottom one will be a squared minus x squared. And remember, when we're doing the substitution, you want to replace x by some variable. Once you have this one here, what you have is just a equal to multiply both sides by this thing. It does not give you a very uh, simple form about how will I express x in terms of another variable. So that's why people choose not to use that because this is not as simple as the previous one. In this case, using cosine theta is the, is the easiest way to do that. Okay. So that's the reason why we want to do that. What's the next thing I want to talk about? Okay. Uh, we always want to deal with dx. So in this case, you want to just, the next one is dx. You take the derivative of this term. So you have, wait a second, what do I want? Uh, sorry, maybe I changed, uh, I got it backward. In our book, they use sine theta, which is better. The only reason is if I do with cosine theta, when I do the derivative, I came up with minus sine theta. Maybe that's not the best, not that's not the, the optimal ones. So I beg your pardon, I'm going to change that. This one still works out, but maybe this could x as the opposite is much better. 
So the adjacent goes to the square root of a squared minus x squared. So again, I need to change that. Um, now x over a becomes opposite over hypotenuse. This gives me sine theta. And if we multiply both as by sine theta, so that gives me x is equal to a times sine theta. Now this is better because I don't have to use an extra negative sign when I'm doing the, uh, the differential. So I will get a cosine theta d theta. So the second term is there. The third one is I have to express that term, the square root of a squared minus x squared. In this case, I probably I want to use this adjacent over the hypotenuse. This is adjacent over the hypotenuse. And we know that's just cosine theta. So I can multiply both as by a. And there we go. This is the term will be involved in our integral. And now it has a square root. Now by using trick substitution, you see the square root is gone. What I have is just a cosine theta. So with these three boxes, three terms, I can rewrite the original integral involving the square root thing into an integral of trick functions of um, uh, theta, and then use what I learned in section 7.2 to solve for that. Again, you see, that's why you always have sine theta multiply with the cosine of theta, which is one of the types of the problem we learned in 7.2. If you go to the first case, you see that's why you see secant of theta always goes with tangent of theta, okay? So, all right, we'll come back to the examples of the second type so this is just the second type. The third type, what I want to show you is you have an integral that involves the sum of these two squares. So this is different than the previous two. Again, you are going to use the triangle. You're still going to draw this kind of triangle and put your theta here. Now, how will I assign um, the sides? In this case, because this is the sum of the square of two sides, so none of this uh, x or a can be the hypotenuse. So x and a, they have to be the lengths for the two legs. Okay. So typically people put x as the opposite and they put a as the adjacent. Now by the Pythagorean theorem, what can you say about the hypotenuse? That should be just equal to the square root of x squared plus a squared. See, everything comes to play. So this is the key. Right? Now, speaking of um, substitution, again, we're going to use right triangle trigonometry. Uh, I think here might be uh, the best choice is use x over a. We know x is the opposite. Uh, the adjacent is a. So that gives me tangent theta. And now you can multiply both sides by a, you get a times tangent theta. So this is the trick substitution. And the next, we always do the differential. You take the derivative, so you have a secant squared theta. And the third thing is we have to express this term as a trick function. So because this is the hypotenuse, I guess maybe I can use the hypotenuse over the adjacent. And we know that gives me secant theta. So multiply both as by a, you get a secant theta. Again, by using these three uh, expressions, you can turn the original integral involving the square root of this, the sum of two squares, into the end integral involving just trig functions of theta. Then we can solve for that. And we can see tangent theta, secant theta, they always go together. Well, you don't have to always use uh, this uh, tangent theta. Sometimes you can use, well, if you go with a different result, if you go with People ask in the past, can you put x as the, the adjacent, your a as the opposite? Then again, your hypotenuse should be the square root of x squared plus a squared. That's fine. But in this, um, let's see, 
So in this case, what you are going to use, probably you want to use x over a, which is the adjacent over the opposite. That gives you cotangent effect. So you can come, if you do this way, simply just switch that, you can still work this thing out, but you just have x equal to cotangent a. When you do the differential of x, you get x dx equal to um, cosecant squared theta d theta is a negative sign. And also you can do the square root of x squared plus a squared by taking this one over a, that equal to hypotenuse over the opposite, we know that's cosecant theta. So this one gives you a cosecant theta. Um, you still can work this out. The purpose I'm showing you this is I want to let you know that's why there's a reason cosecant theta typically goes with cotangent theta. Remember the third type of integrals we did in section 7.2. It came from this practical application of tricks uh, substitution. Okay. But you don't have to do that. Uh, typically this one works better. The reason is whenever you're going to deal with cotangent theta, it's derivative. We're going to carry an extra negative sign. Right, this is a very boring and uh, abstract with uh, these three type of things. Uh, I'm going to show you uh, three different uh, examples corresponding to each of these types and this, uh, try to uh, illustrate how we're going to use this substitution. Okay. And to me, I never memorize all these things. I'm go I would like to draw the right triangle. All right, so let's take a look of the first example where I just wrote down here. Let me just um, copy and paste this. Um, Where my second page go? Let me just put the name there. So we're trying to solve for this problem. So to me, this looks like uh, three cases, right? You have square root of x squared minus a squared, square root of a squared minus x squared, square root of x squared plus a squared. Which one is this? To me, a denotes a constant. To me, this one looks like a constant. This though, that tells me my full, Four should be equal to a squared, so I'm looking at this one here. Okay, so that tells me um, maybe you know, better to use that. Let me just change this a little bit because this x doesn't really matter. So how about I change that to u? Doesn't matter, same problem. And the reason why I'm changing that is by comparing this four minus u squared with a squared minus x squared, I know what are my a's? See, 4 minus a uh, 9 u squared should be equal to a squared minus x squared. So that tells me my 4 should be equal to a squared. If you take it a positive square root, your a is equal to 2. And also the second part, 9 u squared should be equal to x squared. You take the square root and you assume u is positive here. So that if you u should be equal to 3 u. So you can you need to figure out what your a and the x is so you can draw that right triangle. All right, so this is the second type. So I'm going to draw the right triangle, whatever shape, as long as it's a right triangle, put the theta in this form. And so I need to assign this a is equal to two because two squared is equal to four. This one has to go with the hypotenuse because this is four minus something. Two is the largest the size, so put two the Okay, x is equal to 3u, 3u, and the, because this is the second type, so you have to put that, you can put that as the opposite of that. So that will be 3u. Okay. And we know by the Pythagorean theorem, q 
can you figure out what the adjacent side is? Well, that's why you have an adjacent square plus the opposite square, 9 u square should be equal to 4 square, and the adjacent square equal to 4 minus u square, uh, 4 minus 9 u, 9 u square, take the square root, right? That's exactly what we had here in this problem. So Pythagorean theorem naturally gives us 4 minus 9 u squared as the, as the adjacent. So now with this, I need to come up with my substitution. Okay. See, so far I never go back to that three boxes. I'm going to work on this triangle. So the way to do that, you have to change u as some expression of theta. So what I want to use here is I want to use uh, taking 3u over the hypotenuse. I don't want to do this. There's nothing wrong with you do the opposite over the adjacent, but that gives you tangent effect. Nothing wrong writing down this, but this won't help you. This one makes it so hard for you to solve for whatever that you, so this thing won't help. So you want to choose the best trigonometry function such that you can solve for you very easily. I think the best way to do that is, this one is not the best, by looking at this one is maybe that's uh, 3u over 2, because that's the opposite over the hypotenuse, and that gives me sine theta. Once you have this trigonometric function coming out, you want to solve for u in terms of theta. So that's why you multiply both as by uh, the reciprocal of 2 thirds, and you can get u just equal to 2 thirds sine theta. Does that make sense? This is my thought process. This is how I learned that, how to come up with the right um, trigonometry substitution. Once you have this, the second step is always very easy because you're always going to deal with this term using du. So just go ahead, do the differential of du, and that is easy, 2 thirds cosine theta. Don't forget, always with d theta. Come up with this. Now the third thing you need to take care of is you already have dealt with this one. You need to take care of this, which comes out that it will be the D the Jason of that. So how am I going to deal with the the Jason? Again, you strict long tree functions. You see that the I want to show this uh, trick from uh, this triangle here. So if you take the uh, the Jason over the hypotenuse, that's the best way to express this. We end up with cosine theta, right? So that's what we have. So I'm going to have four minus nine u squared over the hypotenuse that gives me um, cosine theta. And the term I am interested in is the numerator. So I multiply both sides by two. I end up with this one just equal to cosine theta, two cosine theta. All right, so this is the, what we need, okay? So, and uh, you can see by using trig functions, the square root is gone. So now the original problem, let me copy that, that down again. So you do integration from zero to two thirds, square root of four minus nine u squared du. This uh, can be written as the integral. This square root, we did it right there. So that's two cosine theta. And what is du? That's the second box. So that's two thirds cosine theta and theta. There's so one more piece is missing is what will be the new integration limits or bounds. This zero two thirds are bounds for you, right? You need to put, you need to be consistent. When you're dealing with theta, you need to put new bounds, new limits for theta. So that's something new for us. How can we figure that out? So this one here, I'm going to write down originally the range for you goes from zero to two thirds. Now I'm trying to figure out correspondingly what will be the range for theta. When u is equal to zero, you put something here. When u is equal to two thirds, you need to put another number there. 
How do I figure that out? Well, you have to go back to the substitution equation because u and the theta, they are related through via this equation. So u is equal to two thirds sine theta. This is different than what we did in the previous two sections. You can plug in a value to get the corresponding um, bonds. This one, you need to solve an equation. So typically people will call this quick substitution as so-called inverse substitution. Well, we're going to see that. So first, you're going to plug in u, zero for u. So plug in zero for u, and now your zero goes to the left-hand side. That gives you two-thirds sine theta. So when u is equal to zero, and you try to solve for theta, you multiply two-thirds on both sides. That tells you sine theta is equal to zero. You remember, theta is in the first quadrant. It's an acute angle. So that tells you that's only one value for theta theta equal to zero, such that your sign theta is equal to zero. So you inversely, you solve for theta, uh, then you get zero. So now you put zero there, so corresponding to this one. The next one is you plug in two thirds for u. So I'm going to write here, u is equal to two thirds. In this case, when you plug in two thirds for u, the left-hand side is two thirds, the right-hand side is Two thirds sine theta divided by two thirds. That tells you one has to be equal to sine theta. And there's only one value for theta in radian. Everything should be in radian. Theta is equal to pi over two. That tells you the corresponding bounds is. And this is what I meant. You cannot directly plug in numbers. You need to solve the equations. So all the strict substitutions, they will be called inverse substitution is a type of substitution. This is something new. We never learned that in calculus one. Okay. But anyway, we find the bounds. So put zero here, put a pi over two here. So that is the what we have right now is just like a integral of trig functions. And that's the one the that's the reason why 7.3 comes after uh, 7.2. We know how to deal with integration of trig functions now. So let's just simplify that and, just, and, and integrate this out. Two times two thirds, that gives me, I'm going to continue to write here as uh, four thirds, pull that out. Zero to two pi. And what's left is cosine squared theta. And we also did cosine squared theta uh, Tuesday or, uh, or Monday, I forgot. You, you have to use double angle formula to reduce the power. And so you're going to write this as a half of one plus cosine two theta in theta. Again, two, four thirds times a half, that's two thirds. Antiderivative, we should be able to integrate out uh, this thing right now. Antiderivative of one gives me theta. Antiderivative of cosine two theta, another substitution. But if you have done that a lot of times, you know there will be an extra one half coming out, sine of two theta. So that will be the antiderivative. Then you just need to evaluate that at two values, zero and pi over two. So let's do that. First, uh, uh, when you plug in pi over two for theta, sine a half of the sine pi. That's how when you plug in pi over two for theta. Now you plug in zero for theta. So you have three, two thirds, zero plus a half of sine of two theta is also here. This one is easy, just simply zero. And also you end up with, um, pi over two, sine pi is equal to zero, right? Sine pi is equal to zero. This is the answer. And to reduce that, the answer is equal to pi over two. So let's solve this problem. So I've been uh, lecturing a lot. Any questions? Are you good? So this is, uh, the procedure for solving this type of one. So maybe I will give you another example. Uh, what happened like this? Um, 
few minutes left. So I'm going to do this one here. Uh, which one will you do the one? So I'm going to do this one actually is lumber. Let's see, number 20. How about I do this one here? Number 20 in section 7.3 exercises. Once again, I think I have told you this. Um, I rarely repeat the examples in the textbook. I always choose and um, pick similar problem in the exercises to do here. And uh, the reason is the first I think you can read. So read the textbook about the examples. Another purpose, I try to give you more examples, right? So number 20, what is that problem? So we just do antiderivative of x over the square root of one plus x squared dx. Right? When I see this square root and I see this is the sum of two squares. So I know this might be the third type of the trick substitution we, we talked about. And I just see this the one plus x squared. This looks like a squared plus x squared. It's easy for me to see my a should be equal to one. So I'm come up with this right triangle. Draw this right triangle, put theta here. So one of the hypot one of the side will be one, another one will be x. And we know typically you put x as the opposite, one as the adjacent. If you do that way, by Pythagorean theorem, the hypotenuse automatically gives you the square root of x squared plus one. That's the bottom one here. So now we can come up with a substitution using three functions, x over one. That's opposite over the adjacent equal to tangent x. Very nice, you just multiply both x by one. So you come up with x equal to tangent theta. Uh, always the next step you do dx, take the derivative of tangent theta, you have secant theta, d theta. And the third thing is you need to express this term here. Right, so you have square root of one plus x squared. So that's the hypotenuse. We know hypotenuse over the adjacent that gives me secant theta, right? Okay, so this one and the multiply both as by one. So you have square root of one plus x squared just equal to secant squared or uh, secant theta. So now with this, we're ready to just rewrite the original problem. Okay, so x over square root of one plus x squared dx. It's very easy to translate this. What I see x, what is x? Tangent theta, so a tangent theta. And the divided by the bottom one is secant theta, so I put secant theta. Now I see dx, what is dx? It's just secant squared theta, d theta. Now we can reduce that. Multiply by secant square theta is kind of like secant square theta over one, right? It's the same. So you can reduce that. So you end up with the antiderivative of tangent theta times secant theta d theta. Once you see this, this is the very simple. We know the antiderivative of this one just equal to secant theta um, plus a constant c. So pretty much we're done. There's just one little thing left. You start with a problem in terms of variable x, you end up with a function in terms of theta. So I've got to do something new. Oh, some, um, one more thing is replace the secant theta in terms of x. Can I do that? Yes, my secant theta, I'll, I'll go back to see what is my secant theta hypotenuse over the adjacent, which is just equal to square root of x squared plus one. Then you just solve for that. So this one just also shows in the future when you are going to do the indefinite integrals, when you come up, when you end up with the function with theta, you have to do some substitution back. You still need to go back to this uh, plot, this diagram of used right triangle trigonometry. So we just don't have time to do the third type of things. So I do have a problem in my mind to do the first type of trick substitution. That's my plan on Friday. Okay, we do that. 
and we move to section 7.4 and also we have a quiz on Friday. So our first quiz one this coming Friday. Uh, let me just to focus on section 7.1, integration by parts. How many questions will there be? I would say two or three, it depends. It depends. How many do you guys want? Not zero. At least. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I will say two or three, yeah. Okay. And I will add a few more problems from section 7.3. Uh, maybe to our next homework assignment. All right. Any other questions? Thank you. All right. Thank you. That's all for today. Have a good one.